All right, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Melvin Randall, 383066. Melvin, my name is Brennan Kelsey. Along with me is Ms. Bonnie Jackson. Ms. Cheryl Renato will be your panel. I'll explain the process to you. Read some information to the record. Have a pro of you. Ask you some questions. You can respond. At the end, you can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. We have uh, Gwendala Johnson, who will speak at the appropriate time, and you have Marcus Dole, who will be in support, but won't be speaking. Melvin Randall, DSC number 383066. You are a third class offender for eligibility date 8 1 2021. Good time date 8 8 2038. Full term date 12 4 2038. 40 year sentence, six months. For obscenity and manslaughter. Is that sound correct? Yes, sir. All right, would you answer Ms. Renaz's question, please? Good morning, Mr. Randall. Good morning. How are you today? I'm just fine. How are you? Mr. Randall, um, how old are you, sir? 48. And how long have you been in jail? 24 years. Four years and uh, what, 40, 40 and a half years sentence? Ma'am? Yeah. 23 of a 40 and a half year sentence. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So I want to speak about the manslaughter. So uh, Mr. Harper, can you tell us, I want you to tell us why you shot Mr. Harper. It was an innocent mistake. I took an innocent man life for nothing. I, what happened? Well, um, I was drinking that night and I decided to go over to his house, collect some money from him. And uh, the, the gun I had was a bad gun and the bullet was jammed up in the gun. So I, we were trying to get the bullet out and it just accidentally went off that night. Why did you have a gun with you? Ma'am? Why did you have a gun with you? I just, dude just gave me the gun uh, just prior to going over there. I didn't go over there with the tension to kill him with the gun. I just had it on me that night. You was going to scare him? Yes, ma'am. How much money did he owe you? Um... Thing. I can't remember. But it was. It wasn't much, and it, it, you know, it, it wasn't much, and it much, much. Yeah, it says uh, what I saw, what I read was it was ten dollars. Is what he had, and he was shot in the head. Uh, when I look at um, you are classified as a third felony offender, and I look at um, you have a. Pretty extensive, in my view, criminal history. You've got numerous misdemeanor offenses. You've got um, battery. You have an obscenity charge of David Wade. I think he satisfied that sentence, I believe. So tell us about what your programs have been. I don't see a lot of program participation in the last 24 years. What have you done? Well, I took a lot of class anger management. Uh, substance abuse. I'm in a uh, Cajun rage, victim awareness, living the balance right now, pre release right now. So, uh, when did you take living in balance? Well, we haven't completed, I haven't completed it yet. In it. Okay. So I guess what I'm getting at is why did it take you so long to get involved in programs? Were they not available to you? At the time. Hmm. Not at the time. How many years? Okay. It was, I mean, it was available. I would, I don't know. Okay. Tell us about your, you had two write-ups in 2021. One was in July, one was in September. Both of those were for a contraband write-up. What was the contraband in each of those cases? The country, that was that was dip. Skull. Yeah, I had some skull going to the Both cases? Skull. Both cases? No, ma'am. The, the, first, the first one in July was for dip. And while, okay. I, was in, while I was in the blocks, me and my cellmate got shook down. He had some pictures and they wrote both of us up for the same pictures. He took the charge when he went to court. He took his charge. 
it, admitted it was his, but they still wrote me up for the same picture. And found me guilty. I don't know. I never seen the pictures. Okay. Somewhere in your record, I noted, uh, we do ask the folks at the institution, you know, about your, what your record looks like. And uh, they've noted that your institutional record was poor. Why do you think they said that? Because I, I, I didn't put forth more effort to complete the programs or what they were trying to provide for me to get better for, for society. You ready to do that now? Ma'am? Ready to do that now? Yes, ma'am. And, and tell me again what you're enrolled in now. Cajun Rage, pre-release, victim awareness, living the balance. All right, well, you're busy. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to stay busy. All right. Uh, I don't have any other, uh, I, I do want to recognize that you have numerous faith-based certificates. You work in the kitchen now? Yes, ma'am. See them, um, when I was at Rayburn, we, they had a lot of program faith-based and, uh, and I had, a, before I got in that program, I had a lot of pain. So now I turn my pain into, uh, to, to, uh, passion. I got a lot of compassion now for life and other people with life. I have a purpose now. So I'm so focused on that purpose and my priority is to get better, do whatever it takes to get better and get out and be a promoted productive citizen. How's your health? My health is not, not too good. I'm a diabetic, high blood pressure, and that's that's pretty about my did diabetic and high blood pressure, a little arthritis here and there. All of that pretty well. You're managing it with medication. Um, yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm doing exercise and I'm eating properly. I'm I'm focused. Like I said, I'm focused on my health and my good. mental and physical state. All right, good. Glad to hear it, Mr. Chairman. I have no other questions. Warren, you have any input for us? Well, I just, you know, I believe he needs to complete all these classes he, he, he's in. Uh, he, like, like I said, he's busy, but he needs to be. He, he had a bumpy road. Took him a while to get his head on straight, but I think I think he's getting there now, but he, he's not quite ready. He needs, he needs to complete these classes and, and, and uh, improve himself. All right, thank you, sir. Ms. Johnson, would you like to make a statement? Yes, thank you. Um, my name is Quinn Johnson. I am the youngest uh, sister. Let me apologize for my voice. I'm trying to get over a cough. So <clears throat> I am the youngest sibling and the, and the only sister to Melvin Randall. Um, just it, I know you guys do this all the time. So there's a lot that you don't know about Melvin. So I just kind of give you a brief uh, overall. He doesn't speak as well as um, you know he could to represent himself. So that's what I'm here for. Melvin did come from a faith-based family, a two-parent household. We had our mother and our father our entire lives. And like he said, he made wrong decisions. We come from a very small town, poor economics, poor demographics. There wasn't a lot to get into. Not a lot of activities, not a lot of positivity things that was going on 24 years ago. So of course he got with the wrong crowd. He made the wrong decisions um, that put him in the place that he is today. I totally agree with you. The records speak for itself. Uh, Melvin and I have had countless conversations over the last 24 years about getting started early. I told him that he has to, you know, get his, do what he needs to do to rehabilitate. That's what the prison system or the penal system is for, to show rehabilitation. So he's he knows that he has a family that he's coming home to, a mom, a stepdad. My brother is here. He has an awesome pastor, a job that he comes to, or that he'll come home to. We, he's, he has a support system that's gonna hold him accountable. We held him accountable then and we continue to hold him accountable throughout the last 24 years of his prison sentence and even when he is released to come home. Um, and so it's not just he'll be released back into society with no one to be there to hold him accountable. He has a place to stay. He has a place to lay his head and he has a family and a poor support system from faith-based leaders to his mother, to his siblings. That's gonna help him out. We ask that you pardon um, my brother today, not just because, I mean, I understand the records and he does have offenses going on, um, but I do feel like he has asked, absolutely learned his lesson. He is remorseful. We talk all the time. 
he's remorseful for the life that he has taken. I mean, we do know that he will be a productive citizen of society. Um, but I will not say I will. Not, I do not disagree with the parole board and with the record that Melvin should have gotten started much sooner than it is right now. It would have been easier for me to speak on it, easier for you guys to have, you know, an easier recommendation. But we do. I do want to let you all know that Melvin definitely has a place to come home where there's support and accountability. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Mr. Randall, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yes, uh, I'd like to thank the, the staff members here for giving me an opportunity to get in position to better myself. And I'd like to thank my sister my family for standing by me for 24 years, even though I made the wrong choice and they, they stood by me and they, like to say, they held me accountable for that. And now I can see I have more compassion now than I did back then. So I just pray that you know y'all can see the same that I that my sister see in me. All right, thank you, Pal. Fair to vote, Mr. Renatz. Mr. Randall, um, I was glad to uh, hear what the things your sister had to say about you. Uh, I was glad to hear you say that you are now focused. Now, I don't think you were focused for a lot of years when you first came to jail. Uh, it's disappointing a little bit to me that you, you know, have just recently um, begun to take advantage of multiple program opportunities that are available to you. Uh, my vote today is going to be to deny your parole, but because I think you do need to complete this focus, uh, and I think you need to then reapply for a parole hearing when you're eligible after you complete those programs. Your focus, focus on the programs, focus on your rehabilitation. I think if you complete the programs, you will likely have a different outcome next time. Good luck to you, sir. Okay. All right, Mr. Randall, uh, like Mrs. Renat said, you, you spent probably 22 years and you did nothing to try to help yourself become a better person. And it seems like you started taking programs and you thought there would be a chance to get out, but not so much because you recognized that you needed a lot more work on yourself. And so um, because of your poor institutional record, your poor disciplinary history, uh, my vote today would be to deny, but to encourage you to um, work harder on getting a program that will make you a better person. But my vote today is to deny. But you have two votes tonight. I'm also going to vote to deny your parole. Uh, continue to work hard with the classes that you're doing. The warden's got you a kind of good plan going. Stay out of trouble. Uh, maybe it'll be a different uh, a different outcome next time. It's three votes to the night. Today, your pro has been denied. Good luck to you. All right, thank you. It's a, uh, you know, it's like another nature versus nurture thing. It's, um, you know, it boggles my mind. His sister was just so impressive. It was um, better than many of the attorneys we've seen on here. And meanwhile, you look at him and, and really Miss Jackson said it best. What I'm uh, mostly kind of shocked about is the fact that they didn't at all pressure him on the idea that he was straight up lying and not taking accountability. He said he went into his house. It was an old gun. They tried to get the bullet out, and it. And then Miss Jackson's like, "How much money did you owe him?" Oh, oh, uh, I forgot to talk about that part. I mean, did he go there to scare the guy, and he by accidentally pulled the trigger? That's more believable, frankly, uh, than to think that he would have just shot him over ten dollars. How senseless. 
you know what's interesting is that there's just no one there um, for the for the victim. There's no prosecutor. There's no victim family, and maybe it's because they just knew the parole board wouldn't let him out. Um, the person has no family. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I tried finding stuff online about it, but I, I couldn't. Um, yeah, I'm glad that they didn't let it out. It's it, he just isn't, you know, didn't doesn't deserve it. And uh, it's quite scary that someone's life was taken after over ten dollars, and then he was dishonest about it. And uh, you know, just from there, it's just now they 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 allowed him to plead down to second degree to get four years. Uh, he's served twenty four years. You know, maybe they'll let him out around when they serve when he's when he's in you know two or three years from now. It's just something they're gonna do. But hopefully, hopefully, with his age and. With his support, he's won't uh, he won't reoffend. It's just I just don't know why they didn't drill down more into the fact that he wasn't being honest. But anyways, love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah.